and we work with a lot of uh, director level, VP level, C level executives. And it's very exciting to see that we're having more uh, contact with women executives. Hello and welcome to Velocitize Talks. I'm Andy North and today I'm joined by Ana Hoyos, Area Director for Latin America with Meltwater. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about Meltwater, uh, where you're going, where you've come from, and what you see happening for the future. Yes, um, so Meltwater is a software as a service company. We do media intelligence. We started in 2001 in Oslo in Norway, and we actually have really humble beginnings. We started basically our founder and CEO with his business partner with just $15,000. Uh, from a Norwegian uh, government grant. So since then, uh, we've grown a lot. Now we are uh, a huge operation. We have offices in 60 different countries, uh, 60 different offices, and, um, uh, and in the end, we're growing really fast. So what we want to do now is continue that expansion. Uh, and we are also evolving a lot in terms of our technology. So uh, not only we're investing a lot into different companies that we've acquired, um, but also heavily into artificial intelligence. So that's really where we see the future, that's uh, where we see the company going, is integrating a lot of these technologies to provide better intelligence for our clients. Let's talk about artificial intelligence a moment. It's one of the hot buzzwords now. It's been around for quite some time, but only now are we starting to really understand it and leverage it. What is Meltwater doing with artificial intelligence? Yeah, so Meltwater as a company, what we've been doing since we started is monitoring a lot of information. So since 2001, we've basically acquired a lot of data uh, in terms of just monitoring news articles, social media posts, etc. And also we know that there's a lot of unstructured data in the internet that could be potentially used to gather uh, all sorts of insights for companies. So what we are doing, and this is the concept of outside insight that our CEO uh, is kind of like coining here, is uh, basically that we can get for our clients information or insights from the outside. So information that's outside their company walls instead of looking at retroactive data, uh, they're going to be looking at information that's happening outside. Uh, and there, the reason we need artificial intelligence for this is that there's a lot of information. There's a lot of unstructured data. And with artificial intelligence, what we can do is actually organize all of this to make sense. Um, and that is really the reason why we've been acquiring all of these different companies, because we want to be able to use this intelligence to help us understand and make sense of all of this information in a very quick and easy way, something that a human wouldn't be basically able to do. And with so many MarTech technologies that are out there now, over 5,000 and, and growing every day, what sort of feedback are you getting from your clients as far as are they able to use the product that you have with ease? Are they having difficulty with artificial intelligence? What kind of feedback are, are, do you, are you hearing from your clients? Uh, our clients really love our tools um, because it allows them to make decisions with very little time invested from their end. So when they go into our system, they're able to understand any sort of um, metrics that could affect them. So they can see trends over time, they can identify peaks in coverage or negative or positive uh, spikes in, in their content that could affect their brand and their company as a whole. So when uh, they, they don't really see our tool as like, okay, I'm using artificial intelligence, what they see is they're, I'm using a tool that's allowing me to access this information in a very easy way. Um, and we have all sorts of different applications for the information that we have now. So they could either find uh, journalists to reach out to uh, that are relevant to the topics that they usually need to talk about. Or they could, uh, just like I mentioned, identify any sort of trends within uh, news or online social media coverage that could affect them uh, and their company brand as well. Uh, you're the area director for Latin America. Talk a little bit, if you will, about the, the growth you're seeing in Latin America, particularly around some of these MarTech technologies such as your product. Absolutely. So Latin America for us is a huge market. And what's very interesting is that the boom of social media, the boom of all of this technology is really happening in Latin America right now. Uh, a lot of these companies are starting to basically understand how important this information is for them. Uh, and especially uh, a lot of these big companies are also starting to invest more in Latin America because they understand uh, the power of the market. They understand how big it is. And to many of these companies also, it's still somewhat of an untapped territory. Um, so when we work with a lot of these companies, both globally or locally in Latin America, 
we are helping them understand their market, we're helping them understand what's happening with their competitors in that specific region, which really gives them a good competitive advantage. Um, so that is really why we're seeing so much growth in Latin America is because we know we're helping these companies grow as well. So with our tools, not only they're able to understand what's happening, but also be able to make decisions on how to take the next steps going forward as they continue to expand in Latin America. Are there any countries in particular in Latin America that you're seeing a lot of growth? Yes. So our main focus so far has been in Brazil and Mexico. These are two of the main markets. And you, you can imagine, right? Both big countries. Um, Brazil is one of the countries that has the most cell phone users, the most people in social media, the same as Mexico. So these two markets are really strong for us. And also because they truly understand the power of social media, a lot of these companies are a little bit more in touch with maybe their American or European counterparts. So they're already borrowing some of their strategies. So that is one of the, the biggest focuses for us. And as we continue to, to develop our market as well, we're going to continue to expand. Uh, a few other countries that we usually uh, work with a lot as well is Argentina, Colombia. Um, so we want to continue to expand those relationships too. Let's talk about the evolution of public relations. It has evolved from somewhat of an inexact science uh, in its early days now to a very highly disciplined, technology-driven profession. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about the evolution of some of the PR software that, that Meltwater has created and where you see it evolving and going in the future. Absolutely. So it's very interesting because we've been part of this evolution. We, as I mentioned, we started the company back in 2001 and even myself, I've been with the company since 2009. So I've seen a lot of this progression. Uh, and what we've seen is at the beginning a lot of even uh, some of the metrics that people were using were not necessarily uh, their bread and butter. They were not asked to report or, or, or think in a, in a more analytical and structured way. Uh, but as the company started to evolve and especially PR is uh, the type of industry that if you need to show ROI, it's very important for you to be able to uh, show back to your executives, to your board, to directors, how much of the efforts are actually correlating and turning into money. So that is why now it's becoming a more exact science in that sense, because you want to be able to quantify your efforts. And this is usually very hard because it's a lot of organic growth. It's a lot of uh, relationship building. But as you use companies like us, for example, you're able to analyze uh, trends over time. You're able to show that there is a growth in the, uh, in the coverage, for example, in the actual volume. Uh, but also you can start getting getting into things like quality, you can start getting into things like uh, ROI in terms of dollars. So there's a lot of different ways for people to measure, but I feel like, especially nowadays, uh, PR professionals want to be able to show that ROI and there's no better way than actually pulling these metrics, showing reports that they can share with everybody else and show how their progression and how all of the hard work that they're putting into the day to day is actually translating to numbers. Let's talk a little bit about brand neutrality or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. In this evolving age where we've started to see a lot of brands taking a stand on certain issues, are you seeing any of that particularly in Latin America? Are brands still content to remain on the sidelines or neutral or do you see them actually evolving and becoming more vocal about certain issues? Uh, it's so interesting this question because I definitely see um, the change that has happened. And you can tell uh, in the US, companies are very vocal about their stance on any uh, subjects. And what I find is that as long as these companies are honest to, and they understand that, that the reason why they're choosing that side or that stance, then the, the brand doesn't get really affected. So in Latin America, what I've seen is that companies are starting to do this a little bit more. But in general, this market is very much um, is very complex because you'd never want to be the type of company that's associated with one side or the other because it, they're afraid that they're going to lose part of their market share, which is understandable, right? Um, so I feel like maybe they're a little bit more cautious on companies in the US, for example, where you can clearly see some companies that are taking a very strong stance on whatever they believe on. Um, but what is exciting is that I'm starting to see some of these companies that are starting to get more involved in certain issues, and especially issues that are not necessarily so polarizing, so they can still contribute, they can be part of the society, they can have a good impact on some of these topics without necessarily taking a stance that's so strong that they're risking damaging their brand or polarizing their, themselves to a point that 
it doesn't even uh, make sense anymore. Women in technology, we're evolving. We've come arguably a long way than where we were. Uh, I think there's a lot more room to grow. Uh, but throughout your career, uh, obviously you've been in the tech world for quite a bit of it. Talk a little bit about what you've seen and what you feel now uh, about that issue and do, where do you see it going? What I've seen since I've started working in the tech industry is definitely, and I've been very lucky because I work for a company and even because we're in a region company, uh, maybe we've had uh, a bit of a different stance, maybe a little bit more equality. Uh, so in my perspective, I've never felt that I was necessarily in a, in a different position as a man. But of course, as you continue to grow with a company and as you continue to see other companies around you and how people develop but even just the fact that there's less women CEOs there's less women CTOs all of this is related to the same subject right as the higher you go the less opportunities are there for women and uh, I think it's definitely related to the fact that women have to take some time off to have a family and then come back etc but what I'm very excited about is like I said having these conversations bringing this subject into the public to really understand that there's truly no difference between a man and a woman that there's truly no difference between uh, the their skills and sometimes it's actually better suited to have a woman in certain positions because of different skills that they have um, that maybe are more suitable for management or things like that. So I, I definitely am very excited about the way things are changing. And like I said, I feel like there is definitely room for improvement, um, but I'm excited for, for, for what's coming. Are you seeing that uh, in some of the, the clients that you visit in Latin America as well? Are you seeing increasing roles for women uh, in those countries? Yes, absolutely. And it's really interesting because we get a lot of exposure to a lot of different companies, all sorts of different industries. And we work with a lot of uh, director level, VP level, C-level executives. And it's very exciting to see that we're having more uh, contact with women executives. Uh, and it's not necessarily something that uh, I would say is radically changing, but I feel like slowly uh, there's more and more women in, in powerful positions, which is something that I personally get really excited about because I know I'm also working with a team of people that I'm, I'm coaching and I'm developing, and I see a lot of these women also growing and taking more leadership positions as well. So there's definitely uh, a lot of, of changes happening, and Latin America is, is one of those places that they're starting to catch up on this too. Let's talk about Miami. You've been here most of your career, you've seen a lot of growth, uh, particularly in the tech industry, as it starts to become in the same sentence with the LA's and Chicago's and New York's of the world a little bit. Uh, what have you seen uh, as far as growth within technology here in Miami, and, and where do you see it evolving? Miami has grown a lot, and I feel, especially over the last, I would say maybe four years, it's been a completely different landscape. When I first moved to Miami, actually, that was 2005, it was a completely different town, basically uh, very focused on the tourism industry. But now I see a lot of tech companies, a lot of tech startups, a lot of focus also on women uh, in tech. So there's definitely a really exciting culture that's starting to brew. There's a lot of great startup companies that are taking a lot of space within the Miami area and they're starting to make a lot of noise uh, and they're starting to bring awareness. They're starting also to make a lot of events and ways for people to network and connect and help each other out. Um, so I'm very definitely excited about what I've seen and how I've seen Miami develop. And like you said, like being up there with mentioned within like, um, cities like Chicago, New York, like big cities that have always been known for this type of tech uh, exposure. Uh, however, I still feel like we need to start bringing more uh, people here to stay. I feel like because of that reason, Miami has always been one of those transient cities where in the end people come, they spend a couple years and then they find another city to go to. Uh, so ideally what I would like to see happening is find ways to create more jobs, to create more opportunities within the tech community so people don't have a reason to leave uh, and they can grow their careers and they can see that expansion and that potential within the city um, because that would create opportunities for everybody. Data is so important, in, particularly in the public relations industry now. As you mentioned, ROI is, is absolutely critical for those of us in the PR profession. Uh, your founder literally wrote the book on bringing insight, outside insight particularly, into the process. Talk a little bit about that, uh, where you see the growth there with that outside insight coming in. So 
uh, our founder and CEO, Jorn Liss again, he wrote this book called Outside Inside. And the whole point of this book, which is related to our brand and, uh, and everything that we're trying to accomplish is to really teach people about the importance of data. Because so far what we've noticed and what he mentions a lot in the book is that executives usually use lagging indicators, data that's happening in the past to make decisions. So as a company, for example, you look at your revenue the last year, you look at your growth, you look at all of these different KPIs, but they're lagging indicators versus having the opportunity to look at information in real time, look outside your walls, look at the information that's public, that's out there, that could give you ideas as to what your competitors are doing, what's happening with your industry, is there any legislation that could affect your business um, and using that data to make decisions instead of only focusing on things in the past. So that is um, all written in this book, as I mentioned, Outside Inside. And I really recommend it for you and for anybody that's interested in this topic, because not only it gives you uh, a lot of ideas into how to use this data, but it uses a lot of actually uh, concrete examples of clients and companies that have been using this data and how they've been thinking a little bit outside the box uh, to understand the market, understand their industry, and then be able to make decisions based on that. And sometimes those decisions have really changed the landscape of their company, have been pivotal in, in their growth and what they've done after that. Are there any example companies that you can mention that have applied this outside inside in real world, world examples? Yeah, absolutely. There's there's a lot of interesting examples. Uh, I think one of the coolest ones is basically uh, basically understanding uh, at this point is understanding the, the the cell phone industry and looking at companies like BlackBerry uh, versus companies like iPhone and really trying to understand what is the difference be and what was the pivotal change there uh, for companies that for like BlackBerry fell behind and companies like iPhone, Galaxy, etc., that started to take that phone uh, to basically what the consumer was needing, uh, not necessarily a keyboard, but more of like a touch screen and uh, really taking that to market. My guest today has been Ana Hoyos, Area Director for Latin America for Meltwater. Ana, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. This was great. Thank you so much.